Hi there, Wes Olszewski here, Great Lakes research historian and author. Tonight's video is about the Huron Cement Boats and the Huron Cement Company. For uh, those of you who grew up around uh, communities like Ludington, Muskegon, Milwaukee, Saginaw, Zilwaukee, these vessels became our favorites because they were often in they were always accessible for good photographing and although this one is in the original Huron cement green I painted it that way because my wife likes it so this is her favorite boat of mine we really fell in love with this paint scheme the Huron cement off-white very difficult color to match if you're a modeler if you're like me you have the actual paint Great stuff, but it takes about a month to dry. Most of what you'll be seeing in this video is referenced from this book. So this is a history of the Huron Cement Company from 1907 to 1957, their 50th anniversary. Great stuff in this book. If you can find one of these for your own library, grab it. So, for those of you who don't have one of these, here it comes. This is a history of the Huron Cement Company. In the final days of 1906, Detroit residents were stunned to discover that seven people had been killed in automobile accidents around the city during the previous 12 months. One of the primary factors in those horseless carriage fatalities was the roadways. Roadways were almost universally made of dirt, and sometimes augmented with bricks. Improved roadways, as well as buildings that were now skyscraping well over six stories, demanded a dramatic increase in a bulk product. That was cement. In January 1907, the Huron-Portland Cement Company was founded. Their first vessel to be acquired was the 308-foot ore boat Samuel Mitchell. Launched in 1892, the Mitchell had been outsized less than a decade after it entered service in the ore trade. In 1915, the Huron Portland Cement Company, which by then was simply being called Huron by its employees, saw the Mitchell as a perfect answer to their cement transportation dilemma. Up until that point, powdered cement product was loaded for shipping by hand. This required men taking cloth bags, attaching them to a scale with a ring on it, then filling the bag to the proper weight by use of a scoop. Each bag was then stitched shut and then had to be loaded aboard a lake boat, stacked and balanced by hand. Loading a single freighter could take as long as three full days, and unloading it took a similar effort. The Huron Company's 1957 history book implies that it was Stanford T. Crapo who came up with the concept of loading the bulk powdered cement directly into the hull of a bulk freighter. Once aboard, the cargo would be transported and the vessel would self-unload by way of a hopper bottom in the hold that would feed a continuous auger. Thus, the Mitchell was converted for that purpose. Mr. Crapo's calculations were that the boat could be loaded in about six hours and unloaded in around 20 hours. That conversion alone cost Huron $80,000, which would be two million one hundred seventy three thousand seven hundred and thirty two dollars in two thousand twenty two the Mitchell left Alpina on her first trip with a load for Huron's Detroit facility on September 28, 1916 this first outing was not without some hitches and the second trip did not take place until the first week of November still her captain W.W. Shorky told the media in Alpena that the Mitchell's new unloading system was working very well. In fact, he stated that it was able to unload faster than the cargo could be carried away from the dock. On September 6, 1923, 
The John W. Boardman was launched at the Toledo Shipbuilding Company. At 350 feet in length, she was the first self-unloading cement carrier to be designed and constructed as such from the keel up. Clearing Toledo on Tuesday, November 6th, she headed for Alpena to pick up her first cargo of 7,500 tons. Just four years later, the Huron Company took possession of their largest cement carrier yet. At noon on Thursday, July 7, 1927, the 402-foot ST Crapo was launched at the Great Lakes Engineering Works. She was the largest cement boat on the lakes and the last one fully constructed for Huron. Although the Great Depression of the 1930s and the early war years of the 1940s were lean for Huron, there was later a benefit. Post-war presented a baby boom and a building boom as well as demonstrating the need for an interstate highway system. New homes needed cement foundations and new buildings needed concrete as well. Huron Cement needed to expand capacity in the 1950s and the war had left behind surplus vessels. One such vessel was the Coastal Delegate which had been constructed for the U.S. Maritime Commission in 1945. Originally, Huron had purchased her to carry freight to the West Indies, starting on November 7, 1951. On June 6, 1952, they sent her to the Bethlehem Steel Company yard in Hoboken, New Jersey. She was to be reconstructed as a self-unloading cement carrier. That conversion was completed on the 18th day of September, and the boat was tugged from the shipyard to the Great Lakes. It was a trip that took five weeks, including a 10-day journey up the Mississippi River. On April 30, 1953, she joined the Huron Cement Fleet, christened as the Paul H. Townsend, still with her stemwinder saltwater configuration. In September of 1955, the 428-foot ore carrier Presque Isle was towed to Sturgeon Bay, Wisconsin. Launched in 1898, the vessel was no longer competitive in the ore and coal trade, and thus her owners, the Cleveland Cliffs Fleet, placed her up for sale. Huron Cement bought her and had her converted to a self-unloading cement carrier. She emerged in 1956 as the E.M. Ford. That same year, the company purchased another outdated ore carrier, the E.C. Collins, from the Kinsman Transit Company. The 440-footer was converted in the same manner as the Ford and emerged as the J.B. Ford in 1959. In 1960, the company made its final purchase of a used vessel. This time, it was an old salty by the name of H.R. Shem. Constructed in 1936 as the Pan Amico and later renamed as simply the Amico, the Shem was run briefly on salt water for Huron and even sailed in their colors as seen here. She arrived on the lakes by way of the St. Lawrence Seaway and then was in layup for a short period of time before her final conversion at the American Shipbuilding Company in Chicago. Under the name J.A.W. Egelhart, she made her first delivery of cement to Toledo on June 19, 1965, and was later christened on July 17. She came out sporting Huron Cement's new colors. Instead of the classic green hull paint, her hull was painted Huron Cement Off-White, and the billboard lettering Huron Cement was painted on her beams in dark red. In later years, the entire fleet's Huron Cement lettering would be changed in color to dark green, as seen here. The remainder of the Huron fleet fitted out in the new colors as the 1966 season opened. Through the years, there was an evolution in the Huron fleet. 
The Samuel Mitchell was taken to salt water during World War II. There she was converted to a stem winder with all accommodations aft. She returned to the lakes in 1948 and again was converted into a cement carrier. Yet she retained her all accommodations aft configuration. In 1971 she was sold to Selvig Marine Towing who in 1973 cut her down to a barge. She was scrapped in 1989. The John W. Boardman was renamed Louis G. Harriman in 1965, but was soon outclassed by her larger fleet mates. She remained in occasional service until September of 1997, when she was towed to Green Bay, Wisconsin to serve as a cement storage hull. In 2004, she was sold to Canadian scrappers, yet her upper bow and its cabins were purchased to become a private waterside cottage. The Lafarge Corporation took over the Huron fleet in 1985. In 1990, the fleet's ownership was changed again when the fleet came under the management of Inland Lakes Transportation, also known as ILT. At that time, the big white H on every vessel stack was replaced with a white letter I, and the Huron cement billboard was painted over. The death of the historic fleet came when Bay Shipbuilding of Sturgeon Bay, Wisconsin constructed the ultra-modern self-unloading cement barge that would be pushed by a tug. Named Integrity, this barge was owned by the American Transport Leasing Company of Muskegon, Michigan. She was pushed by the tug Jacqueline M, and the pair entered service on August 6, 1996. As soon as the news broke that this barge tug pairing was to be working for ILT, the historic Huron boats ST Crapo and EM Ford became excess tonnage. The JAW Egelhart would soon follow. The EM Ford was parked at the Carleton, Michigan cement dock as a transfer barge in 1996. On September 4th of that same year, the ST Crapo was also withdrawn from active service. The EM Ford was towed from the Saginaw River to the scrapyard beginning on November 11th, 2008. The JB Ford had been removed from service on November 15, 1985 due to engine problems and a problem with her five-year Coast Guard survey. That expired in November of 1989. She served as a storage barge until scrapping began on her in late 2021. By the way, for more information on these two vessels in detail, see my videos on them. The Paul Townsend was sold for scrap and towed out of Muskegon, Michigan on September 7, 2017. She was headed for Port Colburn, Ontario. She was scrapped there by Marine Recycling in late 2020. The J.A.W. Egelhart docked at the Old Superior Municipal Terminal in Superior, Wisconsin on October 31, 2006. This ended her career as an active cement carrier on the Great Lakes. Currently, the only self-propelled cement carrier in service on the lakes is the steamer Alpina. Converted from the ore boat Leon Fraser. She has the red jacket on her stack with the silver ring atop and below and a large white letter I between. Additionally, her hull is painted here on cement off white. Thus, all that remains of the old Huron cement fleet is the paint. <laughs>